Hello and welcome. Shorter video today. Once I realized how close we were to that time of the year, I felt obligated to make a Halloween video, so here we are. As for the odd release date, since I normally post my videos on Fridays, I'll get to that at the end here. Also, pardon my voice, I'm a little under the weather at the moment. Anyways, today we're talking about the history of All Hallows Eve and its medieval roots. But first, a spooky story for funsies. It was a cold, moonless night in the Orkney Isles. A lone fisherman trudged along the desolate shoreline, the sound of the waves crashing against the rocks his only company. In the distance, just beyond the mist, he saw something, a lone rider moving steadily across the surface of the water. At first, the fisherman thought his eyes were playing tricks on him. No horse could gallop across the sea, but as he drew closer, the figure came into view, and dread sickled into his bones. The rider, nay, nah, the creature, was something far worse than he could have imagined. Its skin clung loosely to a body of raw, exposed flesh, its veins pulsing and black. It moved not with the grace of a horse, but with the jerking, unnatural gait of something long dead. The creature's head twisted grotesquely from the twisted body of its steed, its red, burning eyes looking on to the fisherman. Panic surged through him. Without thinking, he turned and ran, his heart pounding in his ears. The sound of hooves thundered behind him, growing closer and closer. He sprinted through the darkness, praying to whatever gods would hear him. Just ahead, he saw it, a stream cutting through the land. With a burst of energy, he leapt across the water, but just as his foot landed on the wet stones, he slipped, plummeted into the frigid water, and twisted his right ankle. He clawed his way desperately to the other side, but he knew with his injury he could not outrun his pursuer, and resigned himself to his fate. After a few shaky breaths, the fisherman dared to look back. Silence. The creature was gone, vanished as if it had never been there. Had he imagined it? Was it nothing more than the hallucinations of a tired mind? Or had he narrowly escaped the clutches of the dreaded Naklavi? He could never be sure, but the fear, the burning gaze of that creature, haunted him long after the night had passed. This eerie encounter reflects the kind of deep-rooted superstitions that lingered in medieval Europe, where tales of horrifying creatures like the Nuklavi served as warnings, cautioning people against the dangers lurking in the dark. These beliefs not only shaped the stories people told, but also influenced the festivals they celebrated, like Samhain, the ancient precursor to Halloween. Samhain is a Celtic festival held on the evening of October 31st and the day of November 1st. The name Samhain actually refers to the month of November in Old Irish, but it was also used to describe this festival, marking the transition into winter and the darker half of the year. It was traditionally held on the night of a full moon, for under the silver glow of the full moon, the line between the living and the dead becomes thinner than ever. Its later incorporation into the Gregorian calendar set it where it is today, the 31st of October. For a little more history about the Gregorian calendar, check out this video. For the Celts, days ended and began at sunset, thus the festivities kicked in at dusk and lasted until dusk the next day. During this time, there were several rituals at place, as mentioned in Irish literature, where there were great gatherings and feasts to celebrate the end of harvest. Bonfires were lit and danced around, and portals opened to the other world, allowing spirits and the souls of the dead to visit. Samhain is essentially a celebration for the dead, and there were sacrifices offered to both honor the fallen and to appease woeful forces in hopes of a safe winter. The dead would revisit their homes seeking hospitality where they could find a nice meal waiting for them. Some celebrants also dressed up in costumes going door to door, reciting verses or performing in exchange for food as well. And this was also a helpful tool to confuse the more sinister spirits, avoiding their mischief and wrath. Sounds pretty familiar, right? By the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designated November 1st as All Saints Day, 
where Christians would celebrate and honor saints and martyrs, and November 2nd as All Souls Day to honor the dead. The night before All Saints Day was dubbed All Hallows Eve. See where this is going? The similar functionality of the Christian and Celtic holidays naturally resulted in some overlap of traditions, but it wasn't until the Celtic revival in the late 19th and early 20th century that an increasing interest in Samhain and other Celtic festivals began to grow. A lot of what we know about Celtic tradition, and particularly Irish mythology, comes from records written by Christian monks in the Middle Ages, as the myths and legends were of a spoken tradition. Now we can't talk about the history of Halloween without mentioning one of the hallmarks of the modern holiday, jack-o'-lanterns, which again, are based in Irish and Scottish folklore. Their origin lies in an Irish myth, first printed in the 19th century about a man named Stingy Jack. The tale goes as follows. Stingy Jack invites the devil to have a drink with him, but, being stingy, he refuses to pay for his drink, so he convinces the devil to turn himself into a coin so Jack could pay for both their drinks. The charisma on this guy, dude. Upon changing into a coin, Stingy Jack pockets said coin and keeps it next to a silver cross inside his pocket, preventing the devil from reverting into his original form. To free him, Jack gave the condition that the devil not bother him for the next year, after which, if he died, the devil could have his soul. A deal is struck, a year rolls by, and when the devil turns up again, this time Jack needs him to climb a tree to pick some fruit, but while up there, Jack pulls a fast one once again and carves a cross into the tree bark, preventing the devil from climbing down. Jack ups the ante and makes the devil give him ten more years in exchange for his freedom. Getting pretty cocky there, Jack. But soon after, Jack dies. So as the legend goes, God would not allow someone so unsavory as Stingy Jack into heaven, and the devil, true to his word, already promised he wouldn't take Jack's soul either, so instead, Jack is given a burning coal and left to wander the earth as a ghost. Jack puts the burning coal into a carved out turnip and walks around with it under the name Jack of the Lantern. This is somewhat reminiscent of the Will-o'-the-Wisps, the mysterious ghostly lights in forests and swamps. Regardless, over time, Irish and Scottish people began to carve scary faces into turnips of their own, lighting candles inside of them and placing them in their windows to frighten off old Stingy Jack and other spooky ghosties that wander the night. Eventually, England caught on using large beets instead, and with Irish immigrants to the U.S. came the transition into pumpkin carving. The rest is history. That's all I have for today, folks. But if you like what you see, then by all means, like the video if you learned something, and check out my last one on a mythology you've never heard of. I should mention as well, if you do go back to watch that video, that you also check out The Bordeaux Show for more on that particular topic. I personally find his content inviting, casual, and very informative. His video on dwarves was inspirational to my own world building project they'll cover here in the near future. I also still need to address today's importance. You know, aside from our proximity to Halloween, the reason I chose to post this video today is because October 30th marks one year since the day I first started this channel on YouTube. Yep, happy birthday feudal facts. In all seriousness, a year ago today I started this channel with two goals in mind. I wanted to practice my artistic abilities, something I hadn't pursued fully, and also because, like so many as a kid who watched a lot of YouTube in their youth, I wanted to give it a shot as well. I like history, mythology, and other nerdy things, so with that and my doodling skills, I put it to the test. I had no idea where this would take me, but I followed that curiosity, and here we are a year later. This journey has been full of unexpected twists, new discoveries, and incredible support from all of you. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that it's never too late to chase your dreams. Whether it's something you left behind or something you've always wanted to try, just take that first step. You never know where it might take you. Yes, there will be a resistance. Life wouldn't be worthwhile if it always came easy, but I promise you it'll be worth it. I have so much more planned for this channel, and I'm very excited for you all to see it. Here's to many more stories, more creativity, and more growth together. Thank you for being part of this journey.